Hey, welcome to Fox Cities Core. We're here every week to discuss music in the Fox Cities. I'm your host, Andy McNamara. Today, we'll get the opportunity to sit down with a excellent Green Bay band, Sons of Kong. I'd like to point out that this show is simulcast to WCZR, Code Zero Radio, uh, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Uh, we invite you to be a part of the show by calling in, or you can leave a comment anytime during the show, and we will get to your questions. Having that said, I'd like to welcome to the show, Joe, Chris, and Mike from Sons of Kong. How are you guys doing? Hello, hey, hello. Good to see Good you. Good morning. Hey, here. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have been rocking the area for quite some time. You formed in 2013. If somebody asked to describe, Chris, I'll get back to you there. I saw a look there. Um, so if, if somebody asked you to describe what type of music Sons of Kong plays, how would you respond? Cacophony. <laughs> I I think we're just rock. Yeah, I, rock, I, I describe it as just rock, and that usually people that's usually not a good enough answer. People want to know like, well, what what do you mean by that? And I don't know that we fit into any other really category. Yeah, it's just rock, rock and roll. Yeah, I, I, I know originally when you know you have to describe your sound. I, I, I think I called us blues or garage bass, but we outgrew right. that. And, yeah. and other people have called us alternative rock, and I just I, I don't hear that. No, like rock and roll. I've, yeah, I've heard. We were talking genres before the show. How everything's sub now. Right, right, right. right. Yeah. So like you've got, I've heard you guys described as garage rock, mm -hmm. hard rock. <laughs> yeah. So just playing <laughs> rock. Hard rock. <laughs> we're always we always talk about how we're usually the heaviest band on like a more. Um, like a more uh, pop, you know, right. lighter kind of a uh, venue or whatever, you know, we're always like the heaviest band. And then when we play with metal bands, we're like the lightest band, <laughs> you know? So it's like, we don't just don't fit in, but I just, I, we're aggressive. Okay. Yeah. It's aggressive. I mean, you know, we, we have a light side, but it's, that's not even very light and mm -hmm. then it gets hard, Yeah, but it's, yeah, I, it, it's always driving, you know, it's aggressive. And I you, guess that's the way I put it. Yeah. yeah. That's a good way to describe it. It seems like you guys have played whenever Sons of Kongs are playing, never Sons of Kong are playing. You guys are always playing with really solid bands. Yeah. Have you found out about a lot of bands through shows? Like, how do you typically find these bands to play with? Man, that's a good question. It kind of comes all different ways, doesn't it? People get a hold of us. Uh, I think when we first started, we reached out to a lot of bands. Yeah, we were pretty aggressive because shows just weren't happening. Right. And, and we just took it in our hands, like, we're going to book some shows. So I just scoured Facebook at the time, scoured show flyers, events, see, who, see who's out there. We made a lot of contacts. And from there, it snowballed. And, and you know, somebody saw us, hey, you guys are good. Let's, let's do a show and made it happen. And, and I, yeah, I don't know how... So many good bands reached out to us after that, and, and, and it's, it's been great. Well, I remember a time in Electric City. You know, we played Electric City. There was a, there was a guy out in the audience. I think his name was Andy. <clears throat> and they were like, dude, we should do a show together. <laughs> like, Absolutely. <laughs> Those guys are pudge. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that's kind of – it's organic. You know, yeah, it just kind of happens that way. I think it is um, – yeah, when you we all three of us really enjoy local live music, so we want to cultivate that and be around other, you know, bands and people that are into that same thing. So we just kind of naturally are drawn to other bands that are into the same thing. So you're not looking when you're setting up shows. You're not looking for a specific genre. No, it's just no. what you like. No, exactly. Just yeah. Put it together. Let's rock it up. You know, ready we, to roll. Yeah, we did a show <laughs> of all female. Uh, lead, you know, all the every band besides us had a female lead. Yeah, uh, that was really fun. <laughs> like, that was Different. a theme for that for that one <laughs> show we did. But just good, yeah. We want to play with good bands. Yeah, uh, that's that's number one. And uh, I mean, we can talk about the one we 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 just had. Um, it was supposed to be uh, Choke, who is very heavy grindcore. Yeah, so, yeah. and <laughs> oh, and uh, Sweet Talk. Um, yeah. at the time they they had to drop off, but you know they're modern alt rock they're cutting edge yeah, stuff really good yep. and we, awesome. we we just wanted to kind of that have that that weird genre blend where you're, right. you're gonna see three different things mm -hmm. right know, might not like everybody but you're gonna you're, you're gonna, gonna yeah. hear a lot of different things right so let's go back to the start of 
the band. Mm. <laughs> this was so I think your first release came out in 2013. So when I yeah. mentioned that, were you guys together before 2013? And let's talk about how you met as well. Well, I think originally we, Mike and I, had played in a band with uh, that with a guy. His name was also Joe, and uh, he played <laughs> in the band with Chris also. Yeah. So he was kind of the numbers common, don't lie. Yeah, numbers. numbers don't so lie. that was kind of the yeah. common factor that brought us all together. And there was a there in in the beginning we did have. Uh, another guitar player right and as w- in 2013 we recorded that first ep right. we started to get more shows and started to just really start want to play more and get more shows and uh, josh just didn't have the time to do it and he's, well, he had a new kid coming. he had a new kid coming yeah. he's going back to school and he's like you know right. i just you guys just you want to keep going i don't really want to do it so right. then we really kind of took probably a couple months Oh, we took a full year. A full year, year. okay. 2014 was like just regroup. We're going to be a threesome. And we kind of re... Put everything on Joe. We we rebranded ourselves as a three-piece instead of a four-piece. And that's really when we kind of started this version of Sons of Kong. And that's, to me, in 2015 is when we really started, to me, when I think back on the history of the band. No, that's (laughs) true. 2015 is when we, we played a show, I think, in March, and then... We had some buddies come out, and they everyone gave approval. Like, hey, I think it'll work. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, okay, then that's it. This is what's going to be. Yeah. You know? so was it kind of strange though, dynamic? Dynamic. Yes. Oh yeah. Yes, like, it was. Because you're losing that other piece, you know. So it's everything on Joe. He's like, well, you got to sing and play all the guitar parts. You got to do everything, you know. All right. <laughs> in in a lot of ways, though, creatively, it was really good because there was some songs that just didn't work because we had yeah. two guitar parts and I just tried right. to play Josh's parts and then I tried to like kind of just do something and it was just like, it just seemed like the more we did it, there were some songs that really worked well. And then the new songs that I was writing were geared more towards a three piece. So yeah, um, we just kind of just didn't look back. The songs that didn't work, we just stopped using those songs and <laughs> I wrote new ones and then those ones were the new songs. Yeah, you just <laughs> adapted and well, okay, well, it's, uh, those, those are gone, okay. Good. So yeah, it was. I mean, really, it was. It was good because it did force us to write some new stuff and look at old material with fresh eyes. Right. So 2015, the band starts firing off on all cylinders. That's yep. the the current, yeah, incarnation of the band. And that was the album, two. Yes. Is it? We just called it two, two songs. <laughs> second release. Yep. Yeah. I I wasn't super creative, so I just called it two. Yeah. <laughs> International recognition, <laughs> but yes, yeah, <laughs> we uh, we got a, a song on uh, Classic Rock Magazine, yeah, back again, right? Which was uh, how'd that happen? Well, <laughs> I don't know how that happened. <laughs> uh, Ken Ken McIntyre, one of the, one of the writers, reached out out of the blue. He's like, yeah, I like your sound. <laughs> Love to have a track on on this. We're like, is this you know, is, yeah. this, is this real? Yeah, it's like yeah. yeah. Here's a here's a contract to sign. <laughs> like, yeah, oh, it's it's very real. Yep. <clears throat> and yeah, it's, it's kind of crazy. Where it was our first recording as a three piece. We recorded uh, with our buddy Ryan in his his basement. We didn't have monitors. I mean, yeah. we were doing hand signals to each other. <laughs> it was, that was on the album two. Album yeah. two. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And, and it just worked. It just worked. We yeah, were just... we were rehearsed. Yep. It just didn't matter. We got a Great recording off of yeah. it. And yeah, Ryan did a great job. <clears throat> so that, that first album you recorded down in Chicago, and for the third album you went back down there mm-hmm. to the same place. Yep. What was it that, that drew you into uh, that studio in Chicago? I think it was called Screen Parlor? Uh, is that the right no, one? No, that's uh, Underground. Wall- Wall to wall, wall to wall. Okay. Yeah, which is which now, is now <laughs> condos, condos, <and> such. Yeah. <laughs> high rise condo now. Yeah. Condo to condo. Thank you, Chicago. That's what you do. Uh, so uh, the the connection there is, I, I used to play in in a band early two thousands um, with my buddy Chris, and once that band split up, he got more into the recording side of things. So he went to school for it. Uh, was Chrissy living, Sunshine was living in Chicago. <laughs> And he hooked up with this, this uh, downtown uh, studio, wall to wall recordings. Uh, just beautiful, beautiful oh, studio. It's, I got it's tons such, of pictures, Andy, I could show you. Yeah, I'd love to you see them sometime. Just, dude, it's, such a shame it doesn't exist anymore. Oh, but God, it's, what, a, it's, um, what a place, man. It, it was huge. 
Yeah. It had a huge recording. Of the oh, main yeah. room was huge, yeah. and it just once you record in a big room like that, it's hard. Uh, yeah, you just want that. You know, you want that when you're doing the the guitar tracks. You want that big sound. When you're doing the drum tracks, you want that big sound. It had its own vocal booth. You yep. know, you just go in there, shut the door. You know, and it's but uh, it was mm-mm. it was old and it was yeah. very seventies. Everything like the the singing sixties seventies yeah. was like glass, so you could look yeah. out over the big room, and it was it was really cool. We um, yeah, we just really loved the studio. We thought it was just so cool, so oh. we wanted to go back. Well, there. the cool thing was, you know, there was no click track; it was all played together. Yep. we did it live. So the band played. You know, everything you hear on Chag is all recorded as a band, and then overdubs. You know, you get to have the vocal comes, and then you overdub. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Last night was tough. <laughs> um, uh, then you overdubbed the uh, the guitar stuff. Yep. But the core, all of the core stuff, it's all band. Mm-hmm. Boom. It's yep. like one, two, three, go. And you, it was the probably the third take. It was you know. Yeah, we we really get our we get the level set. Play, play. It. All right, here we go. Now third track. Boom. Mm-hmm. Done. Yeah. Well, you also have uh, we had, we had a deadline. It, it, it's. You're right. Roll on down Friday <laughs> night, set yes. the gear up Saturday morning first thing. Let let's start recording. Yep. And by Sunday you gotta be out of there. So it's it's you had we had to be rehearsed and, and yep. And we just we had to get our takes. But there was there's just such a vibe to that studio. It was yeah. it was really painless, both You're both right. recordings. And you said there's condos there now. Did they just raise the old building that's completely yeah. gone? They just yeah, gutted it, yeah. Just, yeah. Well, then you guys came out with your fourth release, which was SOK. Mm, yes. That's a classic. <laughs> it is a classic now. Yeah. You did that you did four that, years ago. You did that one at the refuge. Yes, we did. We did. The refuge. Yes. Very fun. And that's Corey Chisel. That's uh Corey Chisel set that up. And Sam was the engineer and producer on that. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um from the lately. From the lately. From the lately, yeah. Sam, love you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Haven't seen you in a while, man. <clears throat> it's fun. Like, Another fun recording uh, experience. Yeah. The refuge is like, you know. Yeah, it was cool. It's huge. It's another big room. You know, it's hard to sound bad. Right. Uh, so uh, that was fun. I think that SOK was probably the first time that we really had some time in the studio to experiment a little bit. We experimented with guitar sounds. Right. Um, the, there was a lot of going on with the drums yep. and stuff. So that kind of opened our world a little bit as to what we what was possible, and maybe what we could do, because there wasn't such a big time constraint. So yeah. that was it. Wasn't just set up, play live, and it, you know, right. Sam was like, "No, we're not doing that." You know, like, <laughs> yeah. click track. We're gonna do this. You know, oh, this is different. <laughs> so it was cool. I think this this album, that's okay album. It just it comes in so great. Yeah. Like I mean, that's like you put on a classic <laughs> album. That's You've got the sound right there. It just yeah. comes in and just kicks you. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's okay. Obviously received well. Yeah. Um, after that, you guys put out a album called Five, Five by Three, yeah. Five yeah. Times Three. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm going to guess so. Five songs, three members. No. No. Oh. Close. Is that fifth, fifth album? Fifth, fifth EP by three. Yeah. Okay. By three guys. You know. Yeah. I was clever. I was the, you know, I was, you know, hungover. I was clever that day. As you, you can tell, naming albums is our strong <laughs> <It's like laughs> we The things are really, really good. Yeah. We, we had uh, self-titled to Shag. Shag, because there was, was Shag carpet. Was in, shag. In, in, in the studio, yeah. there's this red and, red and blue Shag carpet. Everywhere. Uh, we took pictures of it. All the like, Wall Street. That was so cool. That's, yeah. So is that the Shag. one of the pictures used for the cover? Was yeah, the cover. it was covered in that. The so whole that's, studio. So that's how that's how <laughs> deep we go. And then yeah, S-O-K. <laughs> yeah, S O K. Yeah, five five by three. That, well, that's... and actually, one of our friends did the artwork for that. Uh, oh yeah, <laughs> Josh did the artwork Josh. for this. Uh, and Josh we, Fuller. Yeah, we actually Josh Fuller. If you're out there, we we like he sent us a picture of this because he he, he did it on a napkin. That, no, it was at something at work on like a pallet on the side of a pallet or some, something like that. You know what I mean? He took a picture of it and we're like, dude, we need that. Like, you're going to have to go back and get that because right. we need it and we're going to use it. So it's just like kind of perfect. Yeah. That's pretty cool. And of course, Sam, you know, yep. I'm on the record of that in the lately and he's got a great ear, doesn't he? Oh, he really absolutely. does. 
Yeah. He loves that tambourine, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, tambourine can make a song. It, it does, man. I mean, in, drummer there, Chris. I mean, any like it's weird the stuff that yeah, the you're, egg, you're, you're, tambourine. Yep. Just you know, if you isolate it, you're like, damn, why does that sound well, so cool? It but also is like, yeah. in a way, the loudest thing. Like it's so loud, yeah. you know, it, make, it cuts <laughs> so hard that if you got to be, you got to know what you're doing with it. Exactly. Be careful with the tambourine. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but but once we got the taste of the tambourine, then it went, it, yeah, then it was <laughs> showing up on recordings <laughs> yeah. now. Yeah, <laughs> I think we, we think we're done. No, we, we, no, no, no. Last day tambourine. All right. Well, that okay. brings us to your last release, your latest release, I should say, No Shy Violet. Yeah, that was recorded in Green Bay. Yep. Yep. The same studio that we did. Ice Cream Parlor. Well, then it was uh, renamed. It was. Yes. Oh, uh, damn it! What did they rename it? Uh, split. <laughs> split. Oh, split. Split recording studios. Split yeah. recording studios. So, uh, yep. Same. Same spot different name but uh it was a really fun uh, another experience another chance to sit down and like experiment a little bit we did a lot with the guitar stuff we yeah. used different amps you know um like a bunch of different pedals i feel like each time we recorded a new track a new thing we used like a different something different which to me when i was doing it i was thinking man this all sounds so different but when i listen to the album together i'm like wow it really kind of comes together and i mean at the end of the day no one you know like i'm a super guitar nerd so i'm like well this pedal and this pedal no one like knows that or cares you know what i mean so it's like <laughs> but, make it sound good but it is know? fun when you're in the moment in the studio recording you know it's, do you guys like to experiment in the studio? I, I think it's something that we've kind of grown into a little bit. If we have time, yeah, for sure. If we have sure. time, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah it's, uh, it's, it, it is really satisfying to have a deadline and create something and it, like just get it done and there's an intensity to that and like just in the recording, it kind of comes through. And to sit down and like listen to a track that's halfway done and think like, okay, how can we make this better? is really fun too it's just a different it's just a really different experience i guess is what i could say well and and, and well five by three and no shy violet we did them both with jamie from sweet talk mm. um and we had such a great time with five by three that we were like we knew yeah. we were going back for the next one there so it's, it's kind of a continuation of what we were doing we worked really well with jamie and he's just like uh, another guy that has a great ear terrific just, yeah. Oh, yeah really uh good a good producer too and so um it's fun to have somebody like that to bounce off i you know bounce ideas off of and he's not in the band so he's like a totally separate yeah. entity like you know it's and so that that was really really you know, fun check your us. ego at the door yeah. and he's locked in he's engaged yep and he's all about getting the best product you can do yep. you know and we tell everybody we play with hey if you're gonna go record you might want to think about getting in with jamie yeah <laughs> you know, if you can yeah radio for pets i think they just came out they went in they're working right now they're, they're working yeah. with jamie and they, they're loving it i'm like i told you you know yeah yeah so <clears throat> are you guys working on any new material always we yeah we have a new song we just we uh pulled out last friday night right? we, it's it. like it's so new that we don't have a name for yeah, it. yeah what's the name of it uh we don't new have song. one it's new the song. new song <laughs> i mean we always no matter what, I always have a new song that we're working on. So yeah. that's <clears throat> just kind of how we do it. But um, it's kind of like, it seems like they usually follow a similar path. We work on it. We get it to a point where we think it's ready. And then we play it live and realize like, okay, well, we need to like button this up a little bit <laughs> right. more. Yeah. And yeah. then it becomes like the real song. And then we name it and stuff. Right. And then it becomes <laughs> an actual song. So it's still in that... Um, you know, growing phase right Infancy. now. Yeah, right, right. Do you guys all bring ideas to the table or is there one person that brings most of the the seeds? I mean, we, we all have brought ideas. Um, I, I think we work best where, where Joe kind of has the idea of, I, I've got, you know, the vocal melody in my mind and, and the initial riff, and then we're really good at shaping the song around that. Yeah. Yep. Um, and that's like, I'm, and it speaks to our like strengths as a band too, because I'm really good at writing the hook and writing, you know, starting it off. And I just, I, it just turning it into that finished product, you know what I mean? Adding the other part and changing the, some of the verses and the courses around and stuff like that. So I think that's how we work really well together. Um, 
it's another thing, you know, I, I, it's about the music, it's about the song, like, I, they've never uh, said to me, like, I, I think we should do this, and I'm like, no, I don't <laughs> think that that, that, you would never say that to me. <laughs> so. so you guys feel comfortable, Mike and Chris, you guys feel comfortable suggesting, you know, hey, well, how about we get rid of that part? Well, even uh, like a song like Danger Queen off SOK, that, you know, I brought that initial uh, drum, you know, the... Uh, uh, the what, drum part. The drum part. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I brought that in and just said, we need to write something around this. Yes. Yeah, I really cool. I think this is cool. This will this will be a drum intro, but it's you know, we gotta do something. And they obliged. You know, yeah. like, okay. You know. Here's some riffs. And yeah. yeah. Man, that, that oh that's cool. And now we'll we'll play around it. And we that really that was cool. That was organic how that worked. It, it yeah. was. <clears throat> but then there there's there also is songs where we it they're done like i i have it and it's pretty much done right and i just write it and then we do it and we've also had some songs that we've worked on for weeks and weeks at a time i write a different song and we we finish it in two weeks and then it's ready <laughs> you know and we're still working on that other one so but there's one that we play we just played the other night nuge that has never <laughs> been recorded it, it's one of our oldest songs. Yes. It's one of our oldest songs. Yeah. And it's gone through iteration after iteration after, you know, it's like just a big jam thing. But then he finally, Joe figured out, well, I can sing this in here. I can do this. And then we pared it down and we pared it. So it might show up on the next recording. I don't it's know. funny <laughs> because people like it. So it's hard when people <laughs> ask you about it. Be like, you know, and yeah. it's just that uh, it's kind of like a, it's kind of a play on Ted Stranglehold. Nugent. I mean, Ted Nugent. Well, and like and that's why it's called Nuge. <laughs> but I mean, obviously, I mean, Ted Nugent didn't even write Stranglehold, right? right but right. but I mean, it's just like kind of a, it's a kind of a play on that. And I remember like telling Chris one time, like I don't know, man, it's kind of like Stranglehold. I don't know, like, <laughs> like no. and he's just like no. No, like Stranglehold goes like ding, 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 did a ding, ding. This is like ding, 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 did a ding, ding. ding. Like, it's totally different. Don't worry about it. Don't worry We're gonna about do it. it. Yeah, it's in the, it's in the vein. It's fine. Don't worry. But, you know. Well, there's so much music out there, and you're probably yeah. influenced by so much. Yeah. Where do you draw the line of right. okay? Well, this sounds a right. little like this song We're or that copying. song. It's We're copying hard, something, yeah. but we don't. Yeah. yeah, homage or, or theft. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. right. Did, did you guys watch the Get Back Beatles documentary? I want to see it. I've not seen. it. I have not seen it. It's on my radar, though. I've, yes. I'm in the same boat. Yeah. I've seen and clips I, of it. I saw a clip, and I, it was great. So yeah. it's during during Christmas break here. It's, it's going to be on yeah. the priority. Yep. I don't want to. I don't want to break any surprises for you guys. We'll discuss a different time. <laughs> okay. Uh, they broke up. <laughs> <laughs> it was all my own coach. Sorry. No. <laughs> Uh, but we, we've been uh, we've been covering about the recording of, of the first releases. I wanted to talk to you about your live shows. The live shows are powerful. Uh, your music is is very driving, very like hooky. Joe talked about hooks. I want to ask Joe? You wearing sunglasses today, and you wear sunglasses during your show. <laughs> <laughs> I don't when, know how he gets away with that. When did that start? <laughs> it. It really stems from, uh, I guess, when we first started playing as a three-piece, I was like, I needed to like look at my fretboard a lot <laughs> to know what I was like doing <laughs> while I was singing and trying to like do everything. So I was like kind of using it to cheat a little bit. And then as we got better, um, I kind of, there was a point at which I kind of had a little bit of stage fright. So I basically just had my eyes closed the entire time. And it just felt really weird to have your eyes closed <laughs> in front of everybody like that. So I just kept wearing the sunglasses. Then it kind of became a thing where it just was a thing, you know, for me. So I just, uh... <laughs> so playing without the sunglasses would probably throw you off. I've done it before, <laughs> but it's, <laughs> it's pretty weird. <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> <Have> you... <laughs> <laughs> Have you thought about getting a, a sunglass sponsorship? I uh, currently do not have one. So if anybody is looking, he did to invest in Sunglass you know, Hut. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I've uh, actually I've traded sunglasses with people in the crowd at shows. Oh, like, God. <laughs> I guess I didn't that know was, that. I did not know that. <laughs> that's that's uh, you know pre-COVID. I don't think I would do it anymore. <laughs> but like, yeah, that's yeah, super fun. Do you guys have a ritual before a show that you do? To get into the zone, 
not really uh just it's like get there early yeah, be prepared <laughs> yeah. don't get don't drink too much right. like, don't get yeah. too drunk uh, yeah just, just <laughs> keep it level until it's time to go on stage have a you know a couple drinks loosen up nothing you know never get sloppy mm -hmm. and and just be ready to go give a good performance yeah is there something that that fans do that you don't like like maybe do you like it when have you had instances where maybe drunk people have gotten up on stage or <laughs> well, the, who was the clown? Oh, uh, the governor. The guy, the, oh, wow. we have we yeah. have had a couple. Uh, well, the first one that I that comes to mind is we played this bar called the Rock and Roundup, and I think we were on last, so it was pretty late. It was probably like one, oh. and it was this guy's birthday. He we did not know him. He just kind of showed up there with a bunch of people, and he was having the greatest time ever. And the dude that sells the roses shows up with this big bundle of roses, and he bought the whole thing of roses, and he yeah. wanted to give everybody one. So he like comes up on stage, and we're in the middle of a song, and yeah. he like gives me one, and I'm playing, and I I, I think I got it in my teeth or something, right. and Mike got one in his teeth, and so he tries <laughs> to give one to Chris yeah, over the drum thing, and Chris is playing drums, and the dude trips. So now all the roses go all into the kit. <laughs> Everywhere. And like, you know, <laughs> right Jesus before Christ. he actually got to the drum kit, he tripped on a microphone cord or something, <laughs> fell on top of it, and it was laying on top of the drum <laughs> kit. And we did not stop. No, I just we kept playing. Like, get the hell out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck out of here. Yeah, the guy, ah, you know, like, well, you know. That was, uh, <laughs> yeah. Have you had any other crazy shows? I mean, yeah. Well, then we did that... Uh, outdoor gig where the guy got up on stage with the egg shaker what was oh it? i forgot about that, yeah. that guy? charlie yeah charlie yeah oh, the, the, yeah was... the down on the farm where it, it, it's our, our other favorite battle is us against power where yes. we like we usually lose because, yes <laughs> yeah. i mean we win but we lose when the power goes out so that's been it's, it's those two amps you yeah know? too much yeah. power they just yeah. some power but then, yeah, the guy got up on stage and he started with the, you know, he was right next to you. Well, he kind of scared me because I was like, <laughs> I didn't know he was there. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> you know, he was kind of over there. And I almost, for some reason, I almost hit him with that, with my guitar headstock on accident, you know, because I was like, whoa. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that was something. I don't, I'm trying to think of anybody else has got up on stage before. Uh, no, not too much. I mean, usually it's it's us. We want to give a good performance. It, yeah. it's, it's usually the shenanigans are after we're done. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. And and then yeah, you know all hell breaks loose. The after party. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, number we 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 just want to be good. We want to be pros. We want to give a good time. You know, and and yeah, people remember us. I would play the best that we possibly can. You know, uh, all the time. Yeah. Is so. there a venue that that you guys like playing? Uh, more than others? Lyric room. The lyric that, room. That's by our far. Home. Yeah. Yeah. It's just. Uh, it's a nice venue. They treat us well. It's good sound, which, you know, we don't really bring a PA ever. We don't run sound. So for the venue to have sound and have somebody to actually run it is usually a pretty big deal. Yeah. And most bars now that have music have that. Um, so, yeah. But, so, yeah, yeah top-notch. Some awesome. of the best best shows we've ever done have been there. We played with some amazing, like Super Suckers, Local Age. Yeah, yeah. Um, so many good bands, Twenty Watt Tombstone. Yeah. I mean, it's just it, it it's it's really home base for us. Do, do you guys feel that opening some of those bigger shows helps mature the band as far as playing bigger shows? Definitely, absolutely. I, yeah, yeah. I mean, um, you got to show you belong. So that's yeah. A, it, you know, it sh sharpens you for sure. When you kind of raise your expectations, right? And then you meet those expectations. It feels good. You know, you feel like, yeah, we're doing something here. You know, we're playing And then it's good. cool. You know, Eddie Spaghetti from Super Suckers on stage just goes, hey, those guys, Sons of Khan, they fucking rock. You know, and it <laughs> doesn't have, he doesn't have to say that, but he did, you know. I, so it's pretty cool. <clears throat> Yeah. My my favorite story about that was we <laughs> so we played the Super Suckers once and then the next time they came to town they played with Driving and Crying, and I remember that song uh, "Fly Me Courageous." Right. You know, like that was like I "Fly just, Me Courageous." <laughs> yeah. So, so like the the singer from Driving and Crying comes up to me, and he goes, "Hey, you're the singer for Sons of Kong, right?" And I'm like, "Yeah, dude." <laughs> I'm just like kind of like whoa yeah you know yeah. and I'm standing there looking at him and he goes yeah Eddie was telling me about you guys and he said <laughs> he said uh, you guys sound a lot better than you look and man he was right <laughs> you guys are pretty good <laughs> and I, I think it's more like 
<laughs> you don't cool. look the way you sound. It was good. Cool. I, 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 I think thought that's, it was awesome. You don't look like you sound, <laughs> yeah. kind of thing. You know. Well, yeah. I'm like, well, fuck it. You know. Then, yeah. you, we just bring in the rock, man. You know. You guys have done some cool things like the um, Rock Garden Live. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Which, that was cool. I've got. <clears throat> Hear the uh, the set list that Ooh. Mike let me take after right. that show. Oh, sweet. I see that it's uh, on some repurposed <laughs> paper there. <laughs> Recycle kids. Yeah. But that was uh, that was a a pretty good show. And how wow. did how did your experience at Rock Garden Live go? It was a little uh, nerve wracking. It was. You've got. I mean, they did intimidating. A, a, yeah. They did a wonderful job. You know, Goldie just yeah. top notch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But you've got, you know, the camera crew, they're like right in your face and right under you. I mean, play in the round, you know, so you got people around you and it just, you know. And, and, and you know, it's going to count. It's for posterity. Right, <laughs> yeah. right. You can't, yeah, this you is can't not suck where... tonight. Yeah, right. Yeah, when you get one shot. Yeah. Well, this is, I guess, uh, similar along to that, but like for any an event like that, you want to get in the zone before that kind of show. And you've got friends and fans and people before shows that want to talk to you right. up to the last second. Yeah. You know, how do you deal with that? Are you okay with that? Or do you need some time to get into the the right head space? No, again, because no. I think we were, we were there early. We're ready to go, you know, right. Sound okay. check. There's nothing, nothing to worry about. So we're, we're, we're cool hanging out. Yeah. You know, I, I until really, it's time to go. I usually have so, uh, some amount of stage fright before a show, no matter what. So um, I welcome any distraction from that. Like, come talk to me, to tell me a story. Right. I'm just, you know, sitting there thinking about, okay, make sure you don't do this. Make sure you don't do this. You know? yeah, so, I, I, yeah, I'm the same way. Just, I, I like we're all to... sitting around talking to people like, oh, all right, oh, time to go. Yeah. All right. the, wor- <laughs> the worst is looking at your watch, like right. oh, yeah. five minutes to go, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. four and a half minutes to go. And that's kind of how the Rock Garden Live was the rock art and life thing was because there was no other band or anything it wasn't at a bar we were just kind of waiting and then okay now go and it was it was just different it was a different experience Mm -hmm. very humbling yeah the worst is when you got as you know uh you got three bands in front of you, and then you're last. You're the last band, so you've been you're like sitting there, <laughs> sitting there. And you're like, good God, yell talking to everybody. Yeah, and, and you're talking, and now you're not talking to anybody because I'm like, now I'm ready to fucking play. You know, <laughs> I just want to get up there and do my thing. You know, so yeah. <laughs> Bob Minter, who's graciously working the cameras today, he asked you guys about Mile of Music and how it was playing in the gigantic uh, Paper Valley Hotel ballroom. Ooh cavernous <laughs> awesome it, it was it was awesome to be there but noon is is so hard for rock and roll people aren't ready yet we're right. we're, we're the the first step in their journey of, 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 <laughs> of, of a saturday a long, day of rock. <laughs> a long day of rock and they're not drinking yet and it's like well you know and we're fucking loud and it's, you know. <laughs> are you guys networking a lot during model music or do you just play in and scramble out of there. It's we kind of we we play, but we'd we'd hang out and you know if we see you know our our comrade bands, we'd hang out with them. Yep. I mean, we we made the most of it for sure. The monkey bar. Yeah, uh, we yeah. Uh, we we did some some damage. We we hurt <laughs> the guys in Zeroed Hero. We we, we hurt. Uh, Troy from the Raglander yep, yep. says, uh, "Was that?" The last time we yes, played yeah. Mile Music, he came and drank with us, and he's like, I'm never drinking with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a fun wheel. You get caught in it, and it's, uh-oh, look out, you know, because when we're not playing, it's, yeah, it's yeah, serious. Yeah, it's, it's fun. I mean, at the end of the day, uh, we the reason why we do Sons of Kong is because it's fun. So that yeah. is the most important thing, and that goes beyond anything else, is we, it has to be fun for us. And right. that's probably why we've been doing it for so long, is because it continues to be fun, fun for all three of mm-hmm. us. We just keep, you know. Yeah. Do you guys prefer, like, doing a festival like Mala Music or Electric City over a show at, like, let's say, a, just a venue, a one-night thing? I wouldn't say that. No. I mean, any, any show, can, it can be really fun. It seems like it's more about the crowd and the other bands that you're playing with, if... It's a good energy. We've had great shows at the Cold Shot in oh, Appleton with yeah. like yeah, you know man. how many twenty people there or something. Big Dave, so <laughs> and we've had you know the, the like I said on the festivals, you're playing, you're stuck at noon. You know it, it's a cool festival, but there's no vibe yet. So that's yeah. that's 
that's tough versus a, a smaller show, but people are into it. That's that's the biggest thing. It, but then we get see. the other side of it. the flip side is the Thursday night that we did at um, uh, Mill, Mill Creek for Mill Maya. Creek. That was off the hook, packed light show. It yeah. was just huge and great, you know. And uh, the vibe we, was there. The vibe was people there. People were hungry. Yeah. yeah, and we delivered, and you know, it just was like, yeah, this is where we belong. Yeah, <laughs> yeah this is this is it. I'm going to squeeze this new segment in quickly because we are running out of time. So that's a good reminder, too. If you've got a question, better fire it in soon. This is our new segment called Band Reaction. Band Reaction. Band Reaction. This is our new segment, Band Reaction, where we play a previous clip from Fox City's Core. We get your reaction during and after. This clip comes from Kurt Gunn a couple oh. years ago, talking about the Green Bay music scene. Let's get your reaction. The Green Bay area, how is the Green Bay scene different from the Appleton scene? I've been out of the Green Bay scene for a while, so I don't know that I could even answer that question. Um, when I used to play there a lot, I hadn't play, I wasn't playing in Appleton, so I couldn't tell you that. I know that I didn't fit in too good in Green Bay, and fit in pretty good in Appleton, and so. But I know guys and girls that um, that do well in Green Bay. It just me personally, I didn't. It didn't work out for me. So Appleton is your adoptive. I've place. got <laughs> yes, I've got a group of people that you know, and they're all friends. That's a, that's an amazing thing. It's like um, I met all these people through playing shows, and I've just I've met so many people from coming down here and doing stuff. And um, I can usually count count on those people to to be out, you know. Um, at least some of them, you know, that at least one or two people that you know are going to be at a show, you know, which is, I couldn't guarantee that in Green Bay. I, that could be a, that could be a venue thing, you know, in Green Bay. There, it depends on what venue maybe he was playing or didn't have access to, whereas Appleton maybe has some other places where people do want to go and see music, you know. that, that. I think the, the thing that he said at the end about um, how – he can count on a right. few people being at a show. Like I would say that's true for us. If we mm -hmm. play a show, we're gonna there's gonna be somebody that we know that's gonna be there. That's yeah. like a friend of the band or you know, yeah. someone that's a fan or whatever there's gonna be. So I would say that, that that my experience would almost be kind of the opposite because it's not that we uh, haven't been well received in Appleton. We just haven't played here a lot. So yeah. um, I guess it's kind of almost the same thing, but inverse. You know, like uh, we have a, have had a good reception in Green Bay, and um, yeah, it's been. We should play Appleton. We should play Appleton more <laughs> and find out, I guess. <laughs> but I'd, I'd say the Appleton bands we've played with have been really inviting. Yeah. Like, like uh, you know, you guys in Pudge. Pudge. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, the, uh, Josh in Iron Price. He, oh, yeah. He yeah. he found us because he liked how our flyer looked. He's like, "You guys want to play a show?" And, yeah. <laughs> like, Who awesome. are you? <laughs> yeah. Josh. And, uh, there's a bunch he's, of metal bands on the show. We'll, he's a sweetheart. Yeah, yeah. We'll we'll, we'll do it. And, and <clears throat> you know, they ended up being just a great bunch of guys. And we we played a lot of fun shows with them. Yep. And then on the, on the Green Bay side of things, uh, we definitely had to earn our place. Number one, and, and number two, it, it's it's it's. People just to me seem like suspicious. Like you gotta, you gotta earn it. You gotta, you know. Right. You can't. You're not just let in the club. So once, once you're like, people figure out, oh, you're all right. Then legit. Then yeah. the <laughs> audience comes and the bands come and. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> all right. That was band reaction, you guys. Thank you for taking part in that segment. Uh, before we we didn't have any choice. Did we? <laughs> <laughs> before we run out of time, I want to ask about. Uh, Music experiences prior, Mike mentioned he was in a band around 2000. Chris, I know you played CBGBs, which I'm very curious yes. about that story. And in the Viper Room in L.A., yeah. That's cool. So how, how, 
what were those experiences and do your bandmates like hearing about them uh i don't know yeah i don't go too deep into it but you know I, it's I, it, always it, fun when chris drags out a story like <laughs> the time he met cheryl crow at the fax at the xerox machine and yeah those are yeah. always welcome stuff yeah. i never yeah. like don't want to hear ocean way studios la there i was it was 2002 <laughs> you know yeah shit 20 years ago <laughs> Oh, I'm not getting any younger. Man. The one about the guy from Black Crows, when the dude thought he was Hootie. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, not the Black Crows. Uh, yeah. Black Crows? I'm trying to think again. Uh, so the guy that Chris was recording, my... right? And then the singer from the Black Crows comes in, and he's like, oh, I'm sorry, guys, right? The counting Crows. It's, it's, not Black Crows. C counting Crows. Counting Crows. I'm counting sorry. Crows. sorry. Singer? Adam Duritz? Adam Duritz comes in. So he comes in the control room. <laughs> And we're like, we're listening back to a, a track and he comes in and he's like, Hey, you know, <clears throat> we need, uh, Cheryl doesn't have Cheryl Crow doesn't have the lyrics to American girl. They were doing that track back. This is 20 years ago, you know? <clears throat> and so Adam Nurse comes in and says, Oh man. Oh shit. I'm sorry. You know, he says, well, let me tell you something. You know, he says, uh, whenever you think you've made it, let me just tell you something. So he's <laughs> like, we're up in Canada, we're doing a show. And he's like, this guy is like just hounding me, hounding me. He's like, man, you got to meet my friends. Come here, come here, come here. You know. So he's like, all right, you know, <laughs> okay. And he says, hey, everybody, it's Hootie. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, so it doesn't matter how many fucking million records you sell, somebody's still not gonna fucking know who you are. You know? <laughs> and we were just, we were just how? And I'm just sitting there like, dude. I'm never gonna forget this moment. You know? <laughs> Guys sold how many millions of records and so many things. He's Hootie in the Blowfish. <laughs> Jesus Christ! And he's counting crap. Yeah, like, yeah. ah, you know. So, so yeah. which uh, which band was that? Uh, band Ebo, E B O, Ebo. Uh, we were out of Washington D.C. We were signed on Maverick Records, so a subsidiary of Warner Brothers and all that. That was a short. It was like a little cup of coffee in the you know in the big time you know. But I was there you know. Uh, we had a lot of fun. I still remember getting a limo from the hotel to the President Warner Brothers uh, estate where he had a Christmas party. That's where all these dwarves would serve you liquor, liquor and stuff. You know, they were dressed up as elves. You know, I mean, hey, you know, they're all union, right? You know, I'm like, Jesus, I guess again. You know, you know, you feel something up against your leg, and oh shit! Yeah, I'll take another Heineken. Hey, yes, you know. <laughs> yeah, but you know, so I was in the bubble, man. I was up in that shit. <laughs> it's hard to top those stories but <laughs> i didn't do nothing ever <laughs> i just sat in my room and played guitar and then i just started playing on stage <laughs> i like tur i like turtles <laughs> <laughs> you look like a scary monster i like turtles <laughs> We've all seen that clip, right? Oh, You've yeah. seen it. Jonathan. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. So where did the, the band name come from? Ooh, that's a good one. We had a list of names, a whole lot of, you know, so it was back when... Uh, we just kept putting, we, when we'd think of something, we'd put it on this list, and we had yeah. all these names on there. Yeah. And I think we actually did a short time as figure four and leg locks. <laughs> it, was, it was on the list. Started. It yeah. was on the that list. That was yeah. like one of them. There was... I Thank remember, God we avoided that one. I remember uh, <laughs> Butterworth was on the list. <laughs> well, you and, get and, a lot of names. And, and the pre Sons of Kong, when me and Joe were playing, um, I, we were the Red States, right, for, right. You know, for a couple shows. So yeah, na naming stuff totally our strong suit. Yeah. <laughs> so it just it was you know as everybody knows you know King Kong whatever 1939, Son of Kong was the the next installment right mm -hmm. but it was more of a b movie it didn't have all the production didn't have the same thing and it was just obviously uh panned you know it wasn't it wasn't worth a shit. but so that somehow that that name gets on there sons of kong you know and boom we all just zeroed in on it like wait a minute all That's right we got one. all these stupid names wait a minute that one <clears throat> that one seems like it it makes sense mm -hmm. you know because we're just we're gonna be loud. We're gonna be aggressive. We're gonna be, you know. Yes. This, this is what we're gonna do. We're, we're, we're gonna rock. Yeah. And then people can yell Kong at us, <laughs> <laughs> or Dong, or yeah. Sons of Dong, Slong, Slong, yeah. Dong. Yeah. Do you guys ever get nervous about playing too loud at certain venues? Uh, never. 
No. Well, I mean, not loud enough ever. <laughs> well, Andy, you know, I, you, I Andy, you know how loud yeah. I am. So that's what that's where the loudness comes from. Me, you know, it's like, well, we got fucking everything's got to be loud because wow. I've I just, seen Mike's amp, and that thing's you need like <laughs> oh my God. that thing's heavy. You need a good back to haul yeah. that thing around. Oh yeah. Well, plus the two, it just sounds good loud. It just does. I, yeah. I don't care what anybody the, says. The only thing I ever worry about, it's not about us being too loud. It's about the capacity of the house PA. Right. Like, <laughs> right. can can it? Right. <laughs> like, can it handle? handle? Can it handle? Can it handle? Can my, you know. Yeah. And I'm a pretty loud singer, so it's usually not an issue. Like, and sometimes you have to tell them, like, okay, don't worry, just get my vocals <laughs> out there. <laughs> Everything else is plenty yeah. loud enough. Like yeah. you won't have to mic anything. Like they're micing the drums and micing the gas. Yeah, you don't need to do that. You can if you want, but like you probably shouldn't. Just mic the kick drum. You don't have to worry about the rest of it. Yeah. Like uh, like uh, what's the dude from Cold Shot, Dave? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. When I played there, I had two amps because I was like experimenting with two separate amps at the same time. He's like, "What the hell do you need two <laughs> amps for? What are you gonna, what are you gonna do with that?" Well, first of all, we showed up late, and that all day was oh, pissed. Yeah. You know, I was like, "Where the hell?" You know. <laughs> <laughs> it was our first time playing there. We, he, first forgets, time playing Appleton. he forgets his bass or some shit. Yeah, we, right? we, we didn't do idiots. We get halfway down out. the road and like, so we got this, we got this. Well, oh, wait a minute. My <laughs> fucking bass. I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> we got to go back. Yeah, so we go back, we get the bass, you know, and then we get there and Dave's like, you know, yeah. what the hell's going on? You know, so we come in and what, you're next, you don't set up there. You got to set, okay. You know, he was just pissed, you know. But that was a good example of uh, when, when we were starting setting everything up. I'm like, man, this is a small place. We're going to be too loud. Like, right, I was right. just worried about it. And it ended up being just fine. So then yeah. I kind of like, I've learned to just let it kind of be what it is because. The good thing about being loud is that people are forced to pay attention to you. You can't come to a Sons of Kong show and talk to your buddy about like anything. Like you have to watch us or leave. <laughs> and people leave. And, yep. it, and that does happen, but that's okay. But that is kind of awesome. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, but at the end of the at the end of the night, Dave was we won him over. Yeah, we won him. Yeah. We weren't too loud, and we yeah. got the we went and got the. It was the bass amp, I think. Yeah, 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 that's what it was. Just yeah, didn't do idiot check, and that was. I, I, and we learned. We've. I don't think we've ever been late. For no, we're we're no. always. Yeah. We want to be punctual, professional. Yeah. We want. Yeah, we won Dave over. <laughs> he's he's a sweetheart to us now. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're we're on the jerky list with him. Yeah, give us some of his jerky. We get his homemade jerky. Yeah. <laughs> we love you, Dave. So, <laughs> what do you guys have coming up for shows? Is there anything on the books right now? Yeah, we have. Um, we're, well, we're playing uh, at Stillmank Brewery. It's going to be a live recorded uh, streamed kind of a thing, which that one. It's funny that you bring up the loud Wednesday, thing. December 29th, 29th, yep. Stillmank Brewery. It's because that one is going to be an interesting kind of um, uh, experiment for us because it's in a tin it's in a brewery, so it's like everything is metal <laughs> in a big room. So we'll see. We'll see how the loudness affects the <laughs> right. beer brewing yeah, stuff. We'll, we'll just give it. <laughs> we'll give it like yeah. We always do. Yeah, exactly. Have you guys played in a brewery before? Not Never. like this. Yeah. No. Never. Um. I I I know they've had. Um, this is about the fifth or sixth uh, one they've run. So hopefully, yes. you know, any any okay. bugs are worked out, and we'll and we'll just. You know, we'll, we'll just adjust volume as, as necessary and go from there. And normally I ask this prior, oh, it's at the end of the show, what uh, bands influence you guys? Ooh. Man, it just fog hat. <laughs> <laughs> I think it really... Can we play some fucking fog hat? <laughs> it depends on the day. You can ask any one of us on a certain day and it would be one thing probably and then you ask another day and it would be something else uh, i think we all like different stuff we're always on the hunt for new things and yeah. being influenced by new things we love we all love the classics yeah i mean yeah well i mean we all love kiss oh, yeah that's that's, that's yeah, an easy just, one you know. yep but I, I know i know i came probably from the heaviest influences the more metal stuff but i you know my caleb favorite. from choke loves kiss <laughs> <laughs> caleb if you're out there <laughs> um, yeah, I've, I've definitely you know uh spread out more hard rock more rock lately um you know queens of the stone age they're probably a big one yeah, Elvis. For us. nirvana nirvana's a big one um yeah if it's good if it's got hooks which which artist if they rolled through Green Bay, what do you want to open for? 
Oh my God. Anybody. I don't care. Kiss. Um, no. <laughs> Share. <laughs> Do you believe? <laughs> Uh, I, I guess before Eddie Eddie Van Halen passed, that, oh, that would that would have fuck, been Van just the ultimate, Shit, dude. Yeah. Eddie Money I probably couldn't have done it. I, <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it. We're not worthy. We're not, there's no way. Alex, I play with Alex's signature drumsticks. I can't do it. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. Got some sad news for you guys. We're at the end of the hour. Oh, oh wow, no! Wow. Uh, where should people and go? And there was no calls. No, no calls, yeah. <laughs> no one cares. We they answered all the rock. questions. You know. <laughs> if um, if people want to find out more about Sons of Kong, where should where should they go? Um, our Facebook, Sons of Kong. Um, we're on Bandcamp uh, for spot, streaming. If you, if Spotify. you like Spotify, that's a big one that I use all the time. Um, yeah, if, if if you want our music, um, iTunes, Apple Music, Spotify, Bank. I mean, yeah, basically just download all of our stuff and wait for instructions. <laughs> <laughs> just remember the name, Google it, you'll find us, and 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 all our shows are on on the Facebook page. Thanks for listening to Fox City's Core on WCZR Code Zero Radio. Thanks very much, you guys. Thanks, Thanks for having you. us. Yeah. Super Thanks, fun. Andy.